Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. Today, I actually want to do a little something a little bit different. We're going to do a little bit of uh, experimentation. We're going to try a couple of new tools that I found, a couple of new techniques, and uh, let's see where this gets us. You guys agree? So, um, if you guys know that a couple of, uh, I think it was like two weeks ago or something, we we're working on this dragon egg, and I showed you a very basic technique that we can use to duplicate these guys, like the little scales, and just move them around. And I mean, it looks okay, right? It's not perfect, there's a lot of overlap and stuff, but it looks okay. The render, the golden egg, looks quite nice, I would say, uh, but we can make this look uh, better. And I thought it would be an interesting uh, exercise to bring this into ZBrush, add a little bit of, uh, like, a like detail and then bring it into into substance you guys know that this thing is actually uh, because we did that in the last video this is actually a a like sphere on the bottom right there and then on top of this we have all of the scales the sphere is important because it allows us to cover all of the parts that we're not like actually seeing so uh i've already exported this thing so i'm just gonna open zbrush real quick and uh, the cool thing about well, not that the cool thing about this is that we're going to be able to jump into the um, into ZBrush, and even though I combine the egg into a single mesh, we should be able to at least polygroup each individual island as a separate piece. That should give us a little bit more like room to to work with, and that hopefully we'll be able to modify a couple of things very nicely. So let's go assets here, drag an egg, and there we go. So this is the dragon egg that we have right here. Again, doesn't look that bad. It's control D to give it a subdivision level. And uh, right now everything is a single uh, polygroup, right? Well, if we go into uh, polygroups and we say auto groups, what's gonna happen as you're about to see is that each individual scale will get a, um, what's the word, a different polygroup. And that's gonna be important because now what I can do is I can grab a B, M as for move and move topological. And this will allow me to just move the scales that are part of a single polygroup. So that way you can, as you can see me doing right here, you can very easily start fixing some of like the most like prominent overlaps that we see, right? So for instance, we can bring some of this guys up or down depending on what we need. And as long as we get rid of, again, the, the most important ones, I think we're gonna be in a good, in a good position. So that, that's the first thing I wanted to do, right? Like I wanted to be able to, to modify this a little bit easier, more easily, is that the proper word? I think so. A little bit easily, easily, easier. I just wanted to make this thing work. So by doing this, as you can see, we can play around with the elements. The other thing I definitely want to do is I want to give everything a little bit more, you know, texture, right? Because everything looks like just very like solid and simple elements right now. And I thought it would be cool to to bring this into a, a more texture or give them a more texture effect. So let's keep on pushing this guys up a little bit. Well, we see that we need it. There we go. There's a couple of areas there that are a little bit empty. I'll probably just like hide those. If I were to 3D print this, then we need to be a little bit more careful, right? Because you can't hide things from a from a 3D print. Renders are, are really tricky, by the way. I've mentioned this before, but uh, when, when delivering renders, everything goes. So sometimes you're gonna have super horrible geometry or bad textures, but as long as they're hidden and no one sees them, and again, it's like the, the old saying, right? If a, if a tree fell in the forest and no one heard it, did it really fall? Well, who knows? There we go. So if there's a, a bad polygon or a bad texture behind the object and you don't see it on the render, is there really a bad polygon? No, the only one that knows it is you. There we go. So we have this. The silhouette is changing a little bit. And here's the first thing I want to try. Again, as I mentioned, this is going to be a little bit of experimentation, but I just want to see if it works um, while teaching a couple of tools. So there's a very cool tool called the um, noise tool. It's here on the... Where is it? Deformation. On the, no, not the deformation. Surface. On the surface, there's the noise tool. And the noise allows us to add noise to every single, like, uh, part of the object, as you can see right here. Now, uh, the interesting thing about this is that it will try to add the noise to each specific element, and uh, we can vary like the strength and the size of the noise, and as you can see, that's gonna give us very cool looking texture. Not only that, we can actually like change the way the noise works with this little curve right here. Um, and again, it's just, it's just 
does like interesting things. Now, if I just hit OK right now, it's gonna break everything. And when I apply to mesh, it really doesn't look like much, right? Uh, that's because even though it's trying to add some noise, it's not really doing like a really good job, to be honest. Now we could use the UV function to try and follow a UV, but we don't have a UV, right? So uh, here's where I'm gonna try to, to actually create a UV and see if that one helps us a little bit more. So we know we have all of this, guys. I'm gonna go to the low subdivision level and I'm gonna go to C plugin, UV master. And um, we could, of course, have done like the UVs in Maya. It's a simple geometry, so it's only about a half and half. Uh, but what can I do here is I can just select polygroups and say unwrap. And what's going to happen is it's going to unwrap every single scale as a single element, as a single like island. And um, it shouldn't be that much or it shouldn't be that complicated for, for Seabrush. As you can see, it did like properly generate everything. Uh, if I go to UV map and I hit a morph UV, you're going to see that we have this UV right here. Is it a perfect UV? No by any stretch of the words not perfect but it, it will work so now let's go back to um to surface noise we're gonna edit let's say uv noise let's cancel let's go a couple of subdivision let's go to like almost a million polygons there we go edit and now if we go to uv and we can change the scale there we go so as you can see that's looking a little bit better i think the scale something like that should be good now let's play with the intensity there we go. See, that's the that's the kind of texture I want to go for. I'm going to hit OK. And when we hit again, apply to mesh, you're going to see that we don't get exactly the same thing that we had on the preview. And that's because the noise is going to look higher resolution than what we actually have. So one thing we can do, of course, is we can control D to, to make this thing uh, a little bit uh, smoother or more polygons, 3.4 million polygons. And now when we apply this, we should be able to hold a little bit more of the of the surface. And you can see that already looks quite nice, I would say. Uh, I'm definitely gonna go again to move topological. And uh, now that we did the noise, there's definitely gonna be a couple of like scales that are gonna be pushing in and out in ways that I don't particularly love. Like this one right here. So I wanna see a little bit of like, you know, the, the overlap between the pieces. So, so that, immediately like this immediately gives us a really 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 nice effect i would say uh which is is great because uh, when we texture this and I, i'm thinking that we're maybe we'll be able to texture it on this video i want to just throw in a quick texture when we texture it we'll see how this looks and and we're gonna have some again some nice like uh overlap between all of the different parts and that's uh it's gonna give us a a nice effect So we're going to push some of them in, some of them out, some of them in, some of them out. There we go. That looks good. Now I'm going to teach you another one of the tools that I was looking for. You guys might remember that um, earlier this year, I think this was like in January or February or something like that, I show you a very, very cool technique that you can use with Substance Sampler to generate tileable textures that are uh like really good in the height information right because we've mentioned this before alphas inside of seabrush are really powerful well not only inside of seabrush alphas in general are really powerful and being able to extract a height information is super useful to get better looking alphas the problem is um photoshop used to have it that it still has a height map generator but every time you use it it says that the tool is now like uh, deprecated that it's going to be like a uh, destroyed or something so you don't like i'm just scared that we're gonna get the like that we're not gonna be able to use it in the future so i don't want to like teach you guys that specific method which again it's not that difficult but i don't want to i don't want to depend on a tool that says it's going to be dying eventually right so uh, I did a little bit of uh, research and I found uh, this very cool looking tool, which is called Awesome Bump 5.1. Last version was released in 2017, uh, so it hasn't been released uh, uh, like <laughs> in a long time, uh, to be honest. But the cool thing about this one, and actually, like, I literally just looked for, like, the best softwares. I've heard about Crazy Bump before. I've heard about, like, Endjob. Uh, but Awesome Bump was at the top features. And, um, yeah, you can get it for free on GitHub, as you can see right here. It does says that it was like uh, updated like not so long ago, so 2020 March. If you go down here to the awesome bump options, you can select the um, the your operating system. Most of you are probably going to be using Windows. Just click right here. 
just click right here and um, download this one. The, in the zip file, it's all of the like the software, and you just like double click the program, and and that's it. So um, I I don't know all of the tools. I literally just downloaded this uh, like a couple of minutes ago, but I'm gonna show you the basic process. I went ahead and I downloaded an image from um, from Pexels. Pexels is a free site, and here we have this one. This is by an artist named Amos uh, Hotler. As you can see, it's this very cool looking Israeli thing for, for wood, right? So uh, what we can do is we can literally just uh, drag and drop or just click this button right here and input the uh, wood texture onto the, onto the software. When we do that, it's gonna load it. It's gonna be using your graphics card. So that's why this is really good because it's relatively fast. And what we need to do is we need to or we want to generate the bump map, right? Or the hide map. Now, if you go all the way up here, uh, we're gonna click here, enable preview. And now we got the preview of the normal map right here. So that's the like the normal map that this thing will generate. This is a very high image, by the way, like high intensity image. And the, if we go to the normal map options right here, we can change a couple of things. Like you can just move things around until you get something that you like. But when you hit convert, this is when the magic happens because um, we're now going to get the image and it's going to be converted into a height map and a, uh, uh, what's the word? Hide map, normal map, like all of the maps that we normally use. Let's just give this thing a couple of seconds. Oh, <laughs> it crashed. I mean, is it really that big? How big is this? Oh, yeah, okay. My bad. That's like a really huge image. It's like an 8K image. So you usually won't need something that big. Let's go. Let's go to Photoshop real quick and let's make a, a 2K image. I thought I downloaded the, uh, the other one, but uh, anyway. Let's uh, create a new file. Uh, it's gonna be 2048 by 2048. Let's just download this. There we go. There we go. So as I mentioned, Photoshop does have its own like height generator thing, which is up here. So if you go 3D or sorry filter, and you do 3D, you can generate a height map, and it is gonna generate it, but it's gonna give you this little warning uh, in just a second. You're gonna see. There we go. Uh, it says, well, I didn't get the warning this time around, but it's going to say, hey, this thing is no longer working, blah, 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 yada, yada. So, I mean, this is perfectly usable, but in this case, we're not going to use it. I'm actually going to export this to our desktop. Let's call this wood. And I know that not everyone has a Photoshop. So if you don't have Photoshop, this is a free way in which you can generate your height maps and normal maps, by the way. So we grab this guy right here desktop and we got the image there we go so and it will preview to see the preview of the normal map there we go and now we you convert so this should convert the image there we go into our normal map so as you can see now we have our normal map right here and if we click on this guys right here we're gonna see the other images like this one look at this this is the um the height map and look how nice and clean this height map looks this is like the cavity map uh, this is, uh, I'm not sure what this one is. Yeah, I'm not sure what this one is, but this one is the one that we're going for, the height map, because look at all that detail that we're getting from the elements. Now, we can, of course, like blur this thing a little bit if, if we feel like height map is a little bit too noisy. So I'm just going to blur it a little bit there. Oh, what did I do there? Oh, it's middle mouse dragging. So if you don't want this to tile, just bring it there. And once you're happy, like, again, you can just, like, enhance the details decrease the details go for small details go for like details depth like again there's a lot of things you can do here you can change the minimum and maximum value uh, in case you want to like crunch certain things uh you can go into levels and adjust this it's just it's just uh, fun there, there is supposed to be a way to see like the, the displacement here I'm, I'm not seeing it and i again i hadn't explored this as much because we're just going to be using this texture inside of seabrush so i'm just gonna like again let's get there and just click this button right here and we save this as wood texture height there we go so now if we jump back into zbrush we can grab like our standard brush change to a drag rect go into alphas import and if we go to our desktop we can import that guy right there and again the great thing about this as you can see is that the detail is way 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 better than we would normally get one thing i'm definitely going to do is i'm going to say brush and i'm going to go to uh, back face masking so auto masking i'm going to turn on back face masking so when we do this, we're not actually like uh, like moving any other things on the on the backside of this element. 
Sprint intensity down. Um, I'm going to change this to a spray. Because what I want is to get this sort of like grunge effect in a little bit of a random way. As you can see, the, the egg is being distorted quite a bit, which is fine. And there we go. So we get this very unique detail all around the, the element. Now, we did modify some of the scales again, so it might not be a bad idea to, to bring some of them out again. So the overlap looks in a very nice way, right? I just play around with with the silhouette of the of the dragon egg to to get something interesting. Another thing we can definitely do is we can definitely grab something like a trim dynamic, for instance, and uh, and we can go in there and and just like hit certain scales, right? Like just a little bit of damage here and there. I have Photoshop open, and you guys know I've talked about this before. Unfortunately, there's a there's a bug with the Huion tablets and Photoshop and Seabrush at the same time. So we're not gonna get the pressure. Let's go with the mini standard. And again, like we can add some like damage here and there. I definitely want to add this sort of like uh, in the reference that we had last time, there was this sort of like burnt effect on the bottom part of the egg. So I'm gonna go back to my standard brush. And I'm gonna change this to like alpha 23. And there we go. See that sort of stuff? It's just like Kind of like calcification, maybe, if that's what we want to call it. And that way we get a, like a couple of different textures. There we go. So I think that looks good. I think this is a, a nice texture for, for the egg. It looks definitely way, way more interesting than just like the flat uh, little elements that we had before. And uh, I think now it's time to go into the textures. I'm going to try to do a quick little textures. And by the way, if you guys want to learn a little bit more about ZBrush, if you want to learn a little bit more about Substance, if you want to learn a little bit more about 3D in general, we offer premium courses with complete uh, exercises and projects that you're going to be able to follow. And you can find all of them in Skillshare. Hey guys, Abraham here. I just wanted to remind you guys that we upload all of our courses to Skillshare. Skillshare is this amazing site where you can access a ton of different content to learn, improve, and grow as an artist. We have all of our courses available to watch and learn from right now in Skillshare. You can check the description down here. And Skillshare is offering one free month trial to their premium membership. With this membership, you're going to be able to access all of our courses and watch and learn all of the amazing things that we cover with all of the softwares. So what are you waiting for? Check Skillshare down here below. There we go. So um, I'm going to go all the way down to the lowest subdivision level, which is this one right here, which is subdivision level one or zero. As you can see, we're at 53,000 points, which is quite a bit of points, but it's not the end of the world. And this is what we're going to export. So I'm going to select export. Let's go to our assets over here, Dragon Egg. I'm going to call this uh, Egg underscore low, and we're going to do FBX. Save. That's fine. And now I'm going to go all the way up to the highest subdivision level, and this is going to be my high poly. The reason why we exported the low poly is because, remember, we have UBs now. We get we got the UBs from ZBrush um, earlier in this um, in this thing, right? So, so now this is the high poly. I'm not going to export this because this is 3 million polygons. It's going to break substance. I'm going to go first to Seed Plugin, and we're going to say Decimation Master. And let's try to decimate this to 250k. Uh, that's going to be like the... Uh, that's usually a good number for, for this sort of stuff. So let's just wait for the decimation process to start. The way decimation works, we've mentioned this before, it will analyze the whole surface of your object and where it sees that there's more detail, we're going to have smaller triangles and when detail is not as abundant, uh, we're going to have bigger triangles. And uh, it's going to do its best to try to accommodate the triangles so they are matched in the best possible way and hopefully we'll be able to reduce this from 3.4 million points to uh, 250k points. Uh, remember, points are always half the amount of polygons. So right now, even though it says 3.4 million points, it's about 7 million polygons if we were to export this. There we go. We were able to do this. So export. And uh, let's go to drag an egg again. This is going to be egg underscore high. Now, again, for the colors, I'm going to keep it really, really, really simple. I just want to add like a little bit of variation and a little bit of uh, intensity here and there. Uh, but we're going to try to keep it, keep it uh, nice and, and clean. Let's just wait for this to export. There we go. Of course, we're going to go back to this one, which has the, the details, and we're going to save this. Let's call this Dragon Egg. Always save your work. 
in case software crashes or windows crashes or lights go out or <laughs> so many so many things that could happen let's close this we don't need it anymore and let's open substance painter real quick by the way i'm going to continue with the uh well, there's still a couple of projects ongoing right we have the um, the shield that i haven't been able to continue uh the sword that we designed uh, last saturday if you haven't checked that one out I thought that was a really cool one, especially due to the information, but apparently you guys didn't like it as much. The views are not or were not as good. Uh, I know that design is not something that everyone loves, but it's important. It's important that we know. 4K, it's fine. We don't need unwrap. We're just going to go with whatever we have. Let's take a look. There we go. So as you can see, the low poly did change. Like uh, the, the like points in the, in the element uh, moved a little bit, and that's why we get this sort of uh, stuff. Now we're going to get texture set settings. We're going to bake mesh maps. It's going to be a 4K map. And we're going to bake the egg high. Let's bake and see how this looks. Perfect. That looks amazing. So as you can see, even though the UV is not perfect, and even though uh, like things are not like up to standard with the workflow, for s simple stuff, it just works. It works. And uh, I know that uh, there's this school of thought that everything should always be perfect. Unfortunately, when you're in a job or in a studio, you won't always have the chance to make everything perfect. So sometimes you're going to have to cut corners. And uh, but again, as long as the final result looks good, you should be you should be fine. So let's take a quick look at some reference because I don't actually have a lot of uh, um, like visual information about how uh, X should look. I'm, I'm going for something like this, I guess. Uh, so that means that there's like a nice like dark color and then like another like color. This is the one that we were using as a, as a sort of um, as a sort of uh, uh, inspiration. Um, I'm gonna use uh, I, we've been playing a new campaign, new D&D campaign. I'm gonna do brass. Uh, so brass, eh. and let's see how this looks. Because brass is, is very interesting. Brass is uh, it, it's like it's like a it's like a mixture between copper and gold, I think. I'm not exactly sure about the metals that go into it, but it looks yellowish. looks a little bit more yellowish. So you can see that we have this brass pier right here. So that's what we're going to use. I'm just going to grab this brass pier right there, and there we go. That's immediately going to give us a very nice uh, starting point. Now, this is way, way too uh, shiny, so let's bring this down. Let's bring it down in color. And uh, I'm also going to bring it up in roughness, because I want this to be rougher. There we go. And uh, the way we're going to do this is I'm going to use... Generators. I'm probably not going to paint a lot. Uh, it's going to be just like a general generic custom thing. So let's start with the uh, with the like the dark parts, right? And rust is definitely what we need here. So I'm going to grab a rust layer. I'm going to add a black mask. Right click, add the generator, and we're going to add a dirt generator. Now, one important thing: the uh, brass does not rust in the exact same color as like normal metal it will get this sort of like greenish hue sometimes like this. Uh, that's important because a lot of people think that all metals rust the same and no, they don't. Some of them rust in slightly different ways. Everyone has seen the Statue of Liberty, right? That was supposed to be, um, I think it was uh, copper um, or bronze, copper or bronze, one of those two. And when those metals are rust, they get that sort of like uh, blue hue-ish uh, effect. So same thing here. I'm gonna go for this sort of like dark blue hue there we go something like that and i normally like to set this to overlay there we go see how that like gets like impregnated pretty much like it, it, it combines itself with the colors and you get like a nicer tone and then of course you can play around with again saturation and things like that to get a an interesting looking effect there we go that that looks cool um now again checking the the reference that we have on the on the dragon x you can see that uh like this guy right here, it has this very cool, like dark color coming from the top, and then it, it fades into the actual color. Same for this one. I like that, so let's let's do that. I'm gonna add a. I'm thinking about what material could be, maybe like a rock material, like this crumbling rock. I have this one. I'm not sure if everyone has this one or not. Uh, this one could add a little bit of like normal information that I think could look cool. Um, so let's increase the tiling here a little bit. There we go black mask right click and we're gonna add a generator and we're gonna add in this case a light generator why a light generator because with the light generator we can point this thing down like this and as you can see it's only gonna be hitting the topper or the uppermost parts of this thing uh, and then we can play around with the highlight level or with the highlight glossiness to make it like harsher or not as harsh 
If we make it less harsh, as you can see, we're not gonna see as much. And then light attenuation, it, it's kind of like it's gonna be like fading down a little bit more as, as we as we go down. There we go. Now let's go back to the color, and we're gonna go for like a darker color, of course. There we go. It seems like I might have uh, attenuated this a little bit too much. There we go. Because I wanna I wanna see the colors there. And very cool. We're just gonna change this to overlay. And what overlay will do, as you can see there, is it's gonna multiply the colors, and we're gonna get a, a different sort of effect right there. And again, if we want this to, to be a little bit more exaggerated, we can of course go bring the attenuation even lower. It should be pointing like straight down. You can play with the highlight level. Ooh, that looks really nice. There we go. I'm gonna get rid of a little bit of highlight glossiness. And as you can see, we can, can see a little bit more of the whole thing. And at any point, I can just like decrease this a little bit. And again, look at the difference that it makes, right? Very cool. Now, uh, you can see that the textures are looking a little bit weird. One thing we could do is we can go back to this guy and change the projection to triplanar projection. That should give me like a softer, more uniform looking effect on the, on the upper parts. There we go, something like that. Okay, that looks good. Uh, let's do something similar on the bottom parts, on the bottom side. So let's grab, uh, let's see, what else do I have over here? There's like mossy, mossy rock back. I like that. We get it there. There we go. We're also going to change this to tray planner projection so that it's more uniform. Perfect. Look at that. Now for this one, I'm going to add a black mask. And if we go to the smart masks over here, we have one that's uh, the, it's, uh, like dirt, like ground dirt. This one. Perfect. And we're just gonna add that one. So as you're about to see, we're gonna get this very cool looking effect down here. Now this one, I actually wanna change this to linear dodge to, to make it like pop a little bit more. And then we're gonna reduce the intensity as well. So that way we get a very, very nice variety. See how easy it is to build up an interesting texture without having to paint anything, without having to do anything, just by combining random stuff. Now it works because the, the egg is very organic, right? It's very, um, it's like this very fancy thing, uh, but still it's a, it's a really nice and easy way to do it. So that looks very nice. Uh, another thing that I'm seeing is that in some of the, of the references here, the scales, like the border of the scale, I think highlighting it might be a good idea. So I'm gonna go back to the brass pure. I'm gonna have this underneath both elements. So right here black mask right click add the generator and this is going to be a metal edge wear there we go i like that and then what we can do is we can change this again to linear dodge and decrease the intensity of the of the highlight that way we're going to have a little bit of highlight here and there look at that not bad huh not bad for like what 10 minutes of texturing uh i think someone's ringing at the door so i'll be right back there we go. It was uh, some packages that they were delivering. So yeah, that's it, guys. I mean, as you can see, we get this very, very cool, um, this very cool effect. I mean, we got rust. We got some very nice highlights on the points. We got this sort of like a dirt thing looking down here. I'm even tempted to change this to like a normal. Not this one. This one was fine normally. This one, just to normal and and just keep it as as like dirt. Cause that looks a little bit more realistic, right? And um, and I think that's pretty much it. I don't see like any other like important details that we're missing. Maybe a little bit of color variation might be good. Like say <laughs> we're doing something very similar to this one, right? So yeah, maybe a couple of like green like points and things in certain areas might be interesting. And the, the way I like to do that is going into this like concrete bear or any other, no, I'm gonna show you another method. I'm just gonna do a fill layer. Let's change this to color only, so that we're only affecting the color. Let's grab like a like a lighter green to start with. We're gonna add a black mask, and then we're gonna add a um, a uh, generator. No, not a generator, sorry, a fill. And then on the fill, you can just look for, again, like clouds and stuff like that, which is gonna give you like this random thing. Let's change this to triplanar again. And then we're gonna play around with like the tiling. And we can play around with like the balance and the contrast. There we 
like that. I think this, let's bring this down. There we go. And now uh, just find the blending mode that looks good. So you can try linear dodge, you can try overlay. Overlay I think looks the best to be honest. And it's just a, like an extra little pass there that can add a, an interesting effect. Even linear dodge might look good if we if we decrease the intensity a little bit. It's kind of like, like moss, right? What you guys think? Nah, I think overlay looks better. Just darker. There we go. And again, we could just like play around with the balance if we need a little bit more green there. And uh, that's that's it. That's the that's the texture. Let's finish up with the render, shall we? I mean, we're already we're already here, so might as well just file export textures. Let's go all the way to our dragon egg here. Select folder, and we're gonna export this. I'm actually going to export this as, uh, oh, let's just do Arnold AA standard, export, we go to Maya, we delete this egg, we don't need that one anymore, nor do we need all of these things right here, file, import, we're going to import the new egg because the new egg has the UVs, right, so, egg low, that's the egg that we need. And then, um, if you're using the Substance plugin, we can very easily just click on this one right here. We can just click on this one right here. It's not working. Uh, let's make sure that the plugin is turned on. Substance, there we go. We're gonna load in this thing. There we go. Select multiple maps. Select all of them. Select. I actually don't want the uh, height, so we can, oh, whatever, let's just apply it. And now there should be a new material here, should be AI Standard Surface 2. And if we go into the Hypershade, and we map out the Standard Surface 2, there we go, that's it. And if we go all the way here, we're going to see the height map. I mean, we can keep the height map. I don't think we really need it. Um, or do we? I don't think so. I think I think it's going to be a little bit too much. But let's give it a shot like this. Control S to save. I already have my render. I already have my lights and everything. So let's just hit render and see how this looks. I might need to pause because I've been having some issues with recording and, and seeing this at the same time, but let's see. Let's see if we can get this. You can do it, Maya, you can do it. There we go. Not bad, huh? Not freaking bad. So yeah, that's it, guys. Um, I was really motivated uh, by um, yesterday's Game of Thrones uh, uh, show. My wife and I were watching it, and um, and it's a really cool one. Look at that. Not bad. Not bad for a nice egg. From what we, what we had to this, I think the improvement is quite obvious. Uh, this is definitely a, like a cinematic or like a commercial asset. That's not something that you would see in a game because it's really heavy, both in textures and in uh, geometry. But as you can see, it's a really, really, really clean and nice result. We're using a denoiser. The scales are like overlapping in a better way. And uh, yeah, I think that's it, guys. Um, I'm going to stop the video right here. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. And um, yeah, try to do this. Maybe... Maybe some of you will share your own uh, versions of the egg in the next uh, portfolio review, which is going to be in October. Um, that's it for now, guys. I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.